Stirling Albion Football Club is a Scottish football club based in the city of Stirling. The club was founded in 1945 following the demise of Kings Park after World War II. The club currently competes in Scottish League Two as a member of the Scottish Professional Football League. Its highest league position came in 1958-59 with a 12th place position in the top flight. Its only major success is in the league where it has won the second tier of Scottish football on four occasions, the last coming in 1964-65. The club has more recently competed in the third or fourth tier following league reconstruction in 1975 and 2013. Stirling's home ground is Fourth Bank Stadium, a 3,808 capacity stadium in the east of the city near the banks of the River Forth. Before the stadium was opened in 1993 the club was based at Anfield Stadium which had been the home of the club since it was founded in 1945. History Origins <inaudible> 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 Stirling Albion was founded in 1945 after the town's previous football team Kings Park had failed to survive the Second World War. Kings Park's ground Fourth Bank had been damaged during the war, having been hit by a German bomb on 20 July 1940. This was one of only two bombs to fall on the town during the Second World War. The new club was the brainchild of local businessman Thomas Ferguson, a local coal magnate, and he purchased the Anfield estate to build a new stadium. Anfield was situated within a quarter of a mile from the town centre and would be the home of the Beanos until 1992. The name Albion supposedly came from the make of Ferguson's coal trucks. This however is an urban myth. Albion coal lorries were used as grandstands but the club was named at a meeting of fans long before a ball was kicked. Reference, Sterling Journal Newspaper, 1945. The name Albion was chosen because it was an old word for Great Britain and held meaning for the founder. <laughs> the yo-yo years Between the 1940 and 1960, the club gained a reputation as a club that was too good for the lower league but never quite good enough to establish themselves in the top flight, hence the club's nickname of the Yo-Yos. For a time it was a saying in Scotland that something or somebody was going up and down like Stirling Albion. In 1966 the club became the first British team to play in Japan. Topic: The 1970s-80s. Under the vastly experienced Bob Shankly, Sterling made progress, achieving consecutive third-place finishes in 1971-72 and 1972-73, narrowly missing out on promotion to the top tier. On retiring to the boardroom, Shankly was succeeded for one season by Frank Beattie but then hand-picked his long-term protégé, former Albion player Alex Smith, who had been cutting his managerial teeth at Stenhouse Muir. Smith's first season in 1974-75 saw the club finish eighth, three points behind Alex Ferguson's Street Mirren in sixth. That slim margin would prove crucial as league reconstruction meant it was the difference between staying in the second division or starting afresh in the new third tier. Over the next two seasons, Smith began a major rebuild of the playing staff that would create one of Albion's finest squads. To a core of long-standing regulars including midfielder Robert Duffin, halfback James Clark and goalkeeper George Young, he added, among others, centre-half John Kennedy from Partick Thistle, Clyde fullback James Burns and Hibernian youngsters Alan Moffat and David Steedman. Midfielder Robin Thompson and teenage winger Graham Armstrong also arrived from non-league football. Albion opened the 1976-77 season with a League Cup campaign that saw them nearly topple Premier Division Aberdeen in the quarter-finals, losing the first leg 1-0 at Pitodry but then winning the return by the same score at Anfield with a Robert Gray header. 
The Dons won the replay at the neutral ground of Dens Park, Dundee, 2-0, before beating both Rangers and Celtic on the way to lifting the trophy. Albion went on to win the second division crown that season, conceding only 29 goals in 39 matches and taking the title with several games to spare. Back in the second tier, Albion finished a creditable fifth in 1977-78 and enjoyed comfortable mid-table finishes in the subsequent two seasons. However, despite consolidation on the pitch, Anfield's infrastructure was in dire need of repair and the club's cash supplies began to run low. The 1980-81 season started memorably with a stunning 1-0 win over Celtic in the first leg of their second round League Cup tie thanks to a Lloyd Irvin goal. They took an early lead in the second leg at Parkhead 2 with a Matt McPhee free kick, but minutes away from a famous victory, a late Tommy Burns strike took the tie to extra time. Albion were eventually overwhelmed and lost 6-2 on aggregate, a teenage Charlie Nicholas coming off the bench to grab his first two goals for the hoops. Following a third match against Celtic, a 3-0 defeat in the Scottish Cup in February, goals and confidence dried up and 13 games without finding the net led to relegation back to the third tier. Through necessity, Albion began to cash in on the squad's better players, and Smith was given the task of developing a conveyor belt of local talent to sell on and keep Albion afloat. George Young had already signed for Rangers for £20,000 in 1979 but the exodus began to pick up pace. Defender George Nicholl went to Dundee United in 1981 and John Kennedy to St Johnston a year later. Three of Smith's local discoveries left in quick succession in 1983 and 1984, striker John Cahoon to Celtic, midfielder Brian Grant to Aberdeen and Scotland youth defender John Philibend to Doncaster Rovers. Meanwhile, stalwart goalkeeper Gordon Arthur departed for Dumbarton. Despite the calibre of the players leaving, Albion maintained consistent top-half finishes and, in 1984, racked up a record 20-0 Scottish Cup victory over Selkirk, which made headlines around the world. Following a bright start to the 1986-87 campaign, Smith was prized away to take charge of St Mirren, and his assistant George Peebles took over at Anfield. Albion finished third and missed out on promotion only on goal difference. Three more local players were poached from the club between 1986 and 1987, Willie Irvin by Hibernian and Robert Dawson and Keith Walker by their old boss at St Mirren, bringing the total revenue raised from player sales linked to the Smith era to nearly £1 million. However, off the field, the council had decided to make as much money as possible from Anfield, and the grass pitch was considered not to be cost-effective. The main stand was also demolished after being declared an unsafe building. An extra large crowd turned up in September 1987, to see Sterling play Air United on the first ever game on artificial turf in Scotland. One consequence of the turf surface was that clubs could decide not to play on the surface in cup matches, and so for the next five years all of Sterling Albion's home cup games were played away. With the supposed advantage of the artificial pitch not working, St Johnston defeated the Beanos by six goals on the artificial surface, Peebles was relieved of his duties and Jim Fleeting was appointed. Fleeting was manager for six months but shook the club up and served as a launch pad for the next ten years. When Fleeting left to manage Kilmarnock days after declaring his loyalty to Sterling Albion, a sincere loyalty I'm proud to say. Beano's star striker John Brogan was promoted to manager and would finally lead the Beano's out of Division 2 in 1991. The club went unbeaten away from home for a whole calendar year, and easily saw off the challenge of Montrose to clinch the title at Lynx Park on 7 April 1991. The 1990s, between Divisions 1 and 2 The next three years in Division I were eventful. The club stayed up, but Anfield was no more and a new ground was built outside the Stirling town centre on the banks of the River Forth. After many years playing at Anfield in the centre of the town, the team now play at Forth Bank Stadium. 
The club was relegated to Division II when the structure of Scottish football was changed again to create a four-division setup. Brogan was sacked and replaced by Kevin Drinkle. Drinkle had a terrible first season in charge, by February the club were third from bottom, and after a defeat at Brecon City the fans revolted against Drinkle. Sensing he was in the last chance saloon, he quickly brought in Paul Dess and Gary Patterson who shored up the team and took them on a 10-game unbeaten run. This run lifted the club into second on the last day of the season, when a point would have secured them an immediate return to Division 1. The Beanos hosted Dumbarton at fourth bank but Dumbarton won, and the Beanos were resigned to another season in the second division. However, in the 1995-96 season the club went on an amazing run and had the league sewn up by Christmas, and were regularly scoring six goals in their games. During 1996-1998 the club returned to the first division. The 1996-97 season saw a respectable mid-table finish. The 1997-98 season began with good early cup form, but the club were relegated after the introduction of foreign players failed to compensate for the loss of several key players. With one game remaining, Drinkle was replaced by his assistant, former West Ham United and Scotland star Ray Stewart. Between 1998 and 2000 the club played in the second division under the management of John Philibene. Philibene was criticised as manager after the signings he made throughout his reign. He was sacked at the end of the 1999-00 season and replaced by Ray Stewart, who returned to manage the Beanos for a second time. <laughs> Recent years. The 2001 season saw Sterling Albion go on a run of 17 games without a win, and finished at the bottom of the second division and were subsequently relegated to the third division. The following season was equally poor as the Beanos finished second bottom of the third division, avoiding the bottom place by the narrowest of margins, a single miss penalty. Their Scottish Cup campaign was similarly weak, with the team being knocked out by East of Scotland league team Gala Ferrydean. Ray Stewart was sacked at the end of the season. Alan Moore was appointed manager at the beginning of the 2002-03 season, and the club saw immediate improvement in its fortunes. The Beanos were promoted to the second division at the end of the 2003-04 season, and the following season saw a respectable fourth-place finish in the league. This improvement continued into season 2005-06. Major changes to the promotion relegation issues had been put into place with the advent of the playoff system, but Sterling just missed out in competing in the playoffs. The following seasons, the Beanos went on an 18 game unbeaten run. This successful run saw the club climb to second place in the second division, where they would finish the season, guaranteeing them a playoff place for promotion to the Scottish First Division. Sterling Albion went into the playoffs after a run of four defeats against Stranra, Brecon City, Air United and Peterhead. The Beanos played Wraith Rovers in the playoff semi-finals. The first game was at Starks Park, where the game finished with a goal-less draw. In the second game of the tie the Beanos defeated Wraith Rovers at fourth bank with Chris Aitken scoring two goals and Colin Cram scoring a third, to secure a playoff final tie with Airdrie United. In the first game of the playoff final the Beanos had to come from two goals behind at half-time, to go into the second game all square at two each. On Saturday 12 May 2007 the Beanos travelled to Airdrie to play the final game of the season and play for promotion to Scottish Division 1. The game was played in front of a shared support of 3,465 people. Sterling Albion secured the win with Robert Snodgrass two goals and Stuart Devine scoring the third goal to gain the Beano's promotion from the Scottish Second Division to the Scottish First Division. It had taken the Beano's nearly ten years to return to the Scottish First Division, after dropping down to ninth in the Scottish Third Division. Slowly over the past five seasons Beano's boss Alan Moore took the Beano's from this lowest ebb in the club's recent history to gaining promotion to the Scottish First Division. However the team entered the First Division as the sole part-time team in that league and failed to sustain their position, finishing in the automatic relegation spot. 
In May 2009 various groups of Sterling Albion supporters, concerned about the future ownership and viability of the club, came together in a campaign to buy the club, inspiring car stickers and postering campaign to that end. Due to the demise of Livingston, the second division for 2009-10 contained three teams from the previous year's third division. In addition, newly relegated Clyde were forced to build a squad from scratch and were thus seen as nigh on relegation certainties. This meant the division appeared to be as weak as it had been for many a season. Sterling Albion therefore began the season as one of, if not the, favourite for the title. A good start from Sterling saw them set the early pace and for a while they appeared to be on their way to pulling well clear of the pack. Unfortunately for the Beanos a combination of poor home form and an inability to keep clean sheets saw them fall from the top of the table. The extended cold spell of weather through the early months of 2010 hit Sterling worse than any other team and soon they were as many as four games behind their promotion rivals. Defeat to Aloha in early April appeared to be a fatal blow. Soon Sterling were 15 points behind the league-leading Wasps and the title looked gone. However, when all looked lost things suddenly began to turn. Eight games compressed into the final 21 days of the season saw the team come together and the gap to Aloha was reduced. As the long-time leaders began to lose games the Beano's consistent run of form saw them regain top spot on the penultimate weekend of the campaign. Sterling then had two chances to win the title. A dramatic 3-3 draw at Cowdenbeath knocked the Fife side out of title contention and meant only a draw was required four days later at Brecon. An early Michael Mullen goal had Sterling in control but a Charlie King leveller and a red card for on loan defender Brian Allison saw Sterling Hart skip a beat. However, the ten men of Sterling held firm and earned the draw which won them their first divisional title for nearly 15 years. In the aftermath of promotion, Sterling manager Alan Moore finally got his much sought-after move into full-time football as he took charge of Greenock Morton. His replacement was John O'Neill, who stepped up from being assistant manager. Club coach Roddy Grant was appointed the new assistant manager. On 2 July it was announced that chairman Peter McKenzie had agreed to sell his majority shareholding to the Sterling Albion Supporters Trust. Thus the Buy Sterling Albion campaign which was launched in May 2009 had finally reached a conclusion. Sterling Albion became the first Scottish league club to be 100% owned by a fans trust. A poor start to season 2010-11 saw John O'Neill and assistant Roddy Grant under pressure. After six straight league defeats, including three by five or more goals, the management team were let go in the wake of 6-1 drubbing at Partick Thistle on 15 January. Former Dundee and Aberdeen manager Jockey Scott replaced John O'Neill in the Sterling hot seat. Jockey was assisted by ex Hibernian manager John Blakely. Only months after their appointment, the Beanos were relegated back to the second division on 9 April 2011, with four games to spare. Jockey was able to finally secure his first win as Sterling Albion manager on the final day of the season in a 3 2 victory over Greenock Morton. In the summer of 2011, the club requested a £200 payment from potential players attending So You Think You're Good Enough trials with the club, hoping to gain a contract for the 2011-12 season. Twelve of those who attended were invited back to attend preseason training to aid their attempts to gain a contract. Despite criticism from players' union representatives, the club announced that a further trial would take place for another 17 players hoping to secure a squad place. Two players who took place in these trials, goalkeeper Sam Filler and defender John Crawley were awarded professional contracts in July 2011, after seven consecutive defeats between October and December 2011 Jockey Scott and assistant John Blakely left the club by mutual consent. During their period in charge the club won only five of 38 competitive fixtures. Defender Greg McDonald was placed in temporary charge, and after ending a losing streak was appointed full-time manager, making him the youngest in the UK at the age of just 29. Despite the appointment, Sterling Albion were relegated to the third division on 29 April 2012 following a 2-1 defeat to Dumbarton. 
On 6 October 2012, Stirling Albion defeated Rangers while bottom of the Scottish League thanks to a Brian Allison goal. Albion then maintained their unbeaten home record against Rangers that season by earning a well-deserved point in a 1-1 draw on 26 February 2013. On 9 March the club recorded a 9-1 home win against East Stirlingshire, with Jordan White scoring four goals. Topic: Honours. League: Scottish Second Tier, currently Scottish Championship. Champions: 4, 1952-53, Runners up: 2, 1948-49, 1950-51. Scottish third tier, currently Scottish League One. Champions: 5, 1946-47, Runners up: 1, 2006-07. Playoff winners: 1, 2006-07. Scottish fourth tier, currently Scottish League Two. Runners up 1, 2003-04. Topic: Club records. Record victory: 20-0 v Selkirk, Scottish Cup, the 8th of December 1984. Record defeat: 0-9 v Dundee United, Division One, the 30th of December 1967. And 0 to 9 v Ross County Scottish Cup, the 6th of February 2010. Record attendance at Anfield Stadium: 26,400 v Celtic Scottish Cup, the 11th of March 1959. Record attendance at Forthbank Stadium: 3,808 v Aberdeen Scottish Cup, the 15th of February 1996. Most appearances: Matt McPhee, 556, 1967 to 1981. Top goalscorer: Billy Steele, 129, 1971 to 1983. Topic: First team squad. As of the 5th of June 2019 note, flags indicate national team as defined under FIFA eligibility rules. Players may hold more than one non-FIFA nationality. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Club officials. Topic: <laughs> 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 Executive team. Chairman and Operations Director, Stuart Brown Commercial Director, Colin Rowley Director, Graham Douglas Finance Director, Alan Christie Member, Rod Turnbull Topic. Coaching staff Manager, Kevin Rutkovich Assistant Manager, Martin Hardy Goalkeeping coach, Alex Conan. Head of medical, Kenny Crichton. Club doctor, Andrew Dealey. Reserve team coach, community engagement manager, Andy Todd. Head of youth administration, David Brown. Head of youth coaching, Mark Wood. Under 18 coaches, Sean Conlon, Aureline Mazel. Under 16 coaches, Jamie Baxter, Mark Pinkoom. Youth goalkeeping coaches, David Eccles, Graham Hamilton. <laughs>